Hi there, this is Lynn Hunter, L-L-Y-N-H-U-N-T-E-R, and today we're going through um, another one of my sketchbooks. We're, all, we're not going to go through the whole thing. Um, this is a relatively new sketchbook. Uh, it looks like I started it in... Lord, when did I start this one? This is... Um, it says 21, but I'm trying to describe... 5-4 uh, or 21, so basically a little bit over a year ago. Um, again, I... Uh, usually uh, give my sketchbooks a name for the heck of it just because I like giving my sketchbook a name this one is why is drawing on crappy paper so fun um, and primarily because when I first got the sketchbook I paid five dollars for it at Ross and um, I thought it was okay this is going to be a you know it's, it's a good size sketchbook it's if you look at it it's, it's about oh that's at least an inch inch and a quarter thick and um, I thought, oh, what the heck, you know, five bucks, you know, let's see what it, it's like. And um, the paper is uh, soft. It's it's basically about a, I would say it's at least an 80 pound stock. Um, when, you, when you're talking about paper, um, it comes in weight. And the weight is based on like the huge press size of a she sheet. But um, depending on on the size of the sheet, it, it, it'll be different um, um, uh, weights. So it's like, it's kind of difficult to say um, what kind of weight the paper is, but it's basically, it's a, a relatively heavy weight and it's it's got a very nice kid finish to it. Um, and I usually like smooth paper, not necessarily um, soft paper, but this, this has had a nice texture to it. And I really, once I, I open the sketchbook, I'm going, oh, this is really great paper. Now, what it is, I, I, I wrote on the inside, it's Royal and Lang Nickel. And they have a, um, a website at www.royalbrush.com. Um, I'll put it, I'll put the uh, link in the description below too, if you're interested. Um, I, I put a note on here that I paid no, I actually I paid three bucks for this one, and um, it, they're four, they're fifteen dollars online. So if I want to get some more, I'll have to pay the the extra money for them. But they're quite nice. And again, uh, this is um, just my regular sketchbook. These are the the types of drawings that I do um, on a regular basis while I'm working. Um, if you haven't been to my videos before, I'm a storyboard artist for animation. That's my, my primary profession. And I do a lot of illustration, freelance illustration work and graphic design work as well. Um, but my primary profession is storyboard artist. And I just recently got off of um, working on Animaniacs for Warner Brothers. Uh, Disney bought uh, Hulu. And I was going to be on another season of Animaniacs, but I didn't get to be on it because, again, D Disney bought Hulu and they decided they did not want another season of Animaniacs. Um, but anyways, this is my sketchbook. Um, I started out by um, doing drawings of um, just dancers. These are and a volleyball player. Um, I was just looking for figures on the internet. And... Um, <laughs> I, what, I, what I write on this page. We live in strange times. If your art is figurative or tells a story or makes uh, money um, commercially for a purpose, it is not fine art. Art is creation, any kind of creation. Humans are the animals that make and do things for a purpose, and all purpose is art. And I, I do believe that. I mean, um, anything you do that you're expressing yourself as art. Um, this is a model that um, I found on the internet. Again, I do a lot of, um, I feel like I need figure drawing costume work all the time. So I do a lot of costume work um, when I can. Um, and, and sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. I thought that this one came out a little awkward. This was just drawing faces. Um, this is Tom Nichols. If you haven't um, watched Tom Nichols online, he has wonderful, wonderful um, educational, uh, sociog sociological type uh, videos. And I, I love his face. He's got this really big face. And I did, just did a caricature of him. 
Um, this was somebody who was online that I did a caricature of. And then I was just practicing faces. A lot of times I'll like um, not want to leave behind empty space on a page. So I'll just start filling up little faces everywhere just to practice, you know, front view, side view, three quarters. This was a purposeful um, page. I did this for about, um, it was like one or two drawings a day. It was my warm up for a while. This is, these are poses from one of my favorite films called um, House of a Thousand Daggers. It's a marvelous, marvelous Chinese film. Um, you can get the subtitles for it, but um, the main actress is an assassin, and she does this sequence with the this amazing, it's a drum dance, and she has these marvelous long sleeves and these great poses. So if you ever need to do... Um, fluid poses or action poses, uh, throw on your favorite DVD or throw on, you know, get Netflix on and just stop it. Stop it somewhere in the, the, um, the film just to, to do the poses. And these are, again, these are more poses. And I, I did two or three at a time. This is cropping. This is, this was a nice fielding because this is, um, the, the nice widescreen, um, setup. I wanted to get a field of, all the, uh, you know, there were the drums in the background and this flipping of the, the sleeves. And all these were, I tried, these were like quick poses I did with, um, this is a razor point. This is this pen right here. This is Pilot. Um, they're um, a Japanese company. And um, I, you can always tell them because they have the yellow cap. Nowadays, um, I can't buy them like at a Staples as easily. I have to go online to get them. But this is a water-based ink. So what I'll do, and I'll show you later when we when I get to the page, but um, I'll, I'll do a drawing and then I'll, I'll lick my finger. I'll put some water on my finger. And you can smear the ink. And that's how I got these, these nice, you know, fluid um, uh, tone. Um, pieces of information. This was with a gray marker. I just threw some gray marker in with the uh, the uh, dry marker. Um, and this is ballpoint pen. Again, I was. This is over a, a period of several days, and they were like war morning warm up. Um, this was. Uh, I'm trying to think of his name. He uh, does Crash Course. He's one of the people. Uh, one of the Green Brothers on Crash Course. I was just drawing his face. This is a pose I saw um, on uh, an anime that I just, I love the pose, and I just stopped and did the pose. I started um, doing um, Pinky and the Brain off of um, the internet because I was hoping to get the job. This was before I got the job on Animaniacs, and I started um, practicing dot and Wacko over here, and this is Brain, of course, and Pinky. This is uh, just playing with the costume, um, my dog on the floor. Um, this was, somebody had done some, uh, some robot pieces, and I just thought, oh, that looks like fun. So I pulled out um, one of my uh, Prismacolor pencils and just played with, okay, let's just throw together a robot for the heck of it. Um, this was again, 15 minutes of heads. Literally, this was a page where I just, I started up in the morning and I just wanted to do heads. And I just, okay, do faces, 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 just get, get, um, playing with filling up the page with as many heads as I could. Um, this was just being silly, um, working with eyes. I'm always practicing eyes, um, and different kinds of cartoon eyes because there's all different ways you can do expressions to get different types of cartoon things. And I was just playing with, okay, what kinds of shapes and characters could I do to get these um, funny, silly things? And I just threw up in the, the corner. It says, I don't want to work. I just want to play to create silly things and draw all the day. And that, 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 is, that has got to be my motto in life. I just want to draw. Um, these are, I, I was stopping um, various, uh, um, uh, how should I say that, films. I was just taking whatever film that was on um, 
in the background playing and stopped it and did some some staging setups um, while I'm working on an illustration or a storyboard I will always have um, usually something on YouTube or I'll have a movie in the background this was actually something from I believe uh, Sherlock Holmes um, there was a, a fight sequence in um, one of the Sherlock Holmes movies and I liked the way they had set it up so I threw down the composition that they had set up in the Sherlock Holmes movies this was um, watching an anime, um, uh, Mars Red, I believe it was. This was from Mars Red. I know this was from Mars Red. These are guys, some guys chasing after them down in a subway station. And I really like this overlay and how they had the, the, these characters run behind that overlay. And I just wanted to, to put that down because it was just a really nice way of staging things. And then I was just playing with a few composition um, ideas. Uh, again, there was some, some type of um, moving the background. And I was just throwing them down. Um, again, playing with Pinky and not doing very well with it. That this was the day that um, they did the the spaceship um, White Knight Two, where um, Virgin. Um, was it Virgin Space or Virgin Atlantic? Uh, Virgin Galactic. That's what it's called. It's Virgin Galactic. And it was on my computer. And NASA was running um, the, uh, the feed while also Stephen Colbert was doing a play-by-play. -play. And I just I wanted to get it down while it was happening. So I had it on my computer. And this was like a camera was from the camera feed on land. Um, this was basically, um, a drawing I did from a couple of, of shots of it, um, as fast as I could. This is, um, um, White Knight 2. That's the, um, the, uh, Eva or Ava, Eve, Eve, Eve is the, the spaceship in the center and they have like two ships on either side and it detaches from that center. And I just wanted to get like a, a moment in time down on page. So I did that one. These were literally done. Whatever I saw on the screen. And you can tell these are like really fast thumbnail. This is stuff done in ballpoint pen. Um, whatever I saw on the camera. That's a really bad um, picture of Branson. Um, different uh, images and angles of the flight while it was happening. So it's kind of like um, what they used to do at the turn of the century when they didn't have photographic cameras. They would send out artists to sketch stuff in pencil. And then they'd get the, get the drawings down as fast as possible when they got back. And then someone would do an engraving on them before they were printed. And it's, I was trying to you know, get that same um, in the moment of time feel while I was doing the drawings. And this... What was it, a week later that Jeff Bezos did his? So this is um, this was the uh, um, Blue Origin New Shepard. Um, this was the, the launch site in the desert while I was waiting for them to take off. I just did the all the, um, the uh, setup for the launch, and this is um, New Shepard right here. And this was like, they kept on showing the, the engines. So I, I did a, a drawing of the engines, and this is like a wide shot of the whole thing. And um, as it was taking off, um, I sketched this down as fast as I possibly could. And you know I came in afterwards and, and, and cleaned it up and did a little bit of extra. But this was me trying to get that moment in time when um, Blue Origin took off. Just because, again, it was like a cool moment in time and I, I wanted to capture it. And these are playing with Pinky and the Brain. Um, just really, really fast sketching. Again, this that this would be done with my pilot pen. So i getting the smearing, throwing a little bit of, um, of 3D into him. Um, again, more Pinky, more Brain. And this is... Uh, it looks like it's uh, 421. Um, 
and this was just me playing with with ideas for drawing little girls I always it said um, when you draw everyone else's dance for so long you forget you have the ability to make your own um, sometimes when you're working in animation it's like I'm always having to draw somebody else's characters in somebody else's style so one of the things I like to do at my sketchbook is just escape and do my own stuff occasionally um, just for the heck of it and I was just I wanted to play with two little girls in kind of um, a traditional European costume um, just drawing somebody faces playing with faces playing with um, um, a new pen that had you could tell it it had a, a little bit of um, um, almost brush like quality so I was trying to play with shapes of noses and faces and things of that nature, playing with the setup for a background, getting more faces, setting up two people in a um, talking type situation. More pinky and brain. Um, and I w almost got on the Sonic movie. I got an interview for the Sonic movie. So um, I just for the hell of it, I thought, okay, I haven't drawn Sonic in a long time. Let's see what Sonic. So I, I pulled up Sonic on the, the internet and just did a, my own Sonic off of that Sonic. More Pinky and Brain. Just fun, fast, just playing with the shapes and the forms and posing. Um, again, I wasn't sure whether I was going to get on the show or not, and I wanted to draw as much of them as I could um, before I got on the show. So there are a lot of Pinky and Brains in the sketchbook and another sketchbook. Um... And this, I, I actually, I got rejected twice before I got hired onto the show. And these were just a couple of more of, um, we missed the target totally brain. No kidding. Um, that was what I was feeling at that time. So <laughs> I did those two. This is just, um, um, doing a pen, and, um, ballpoint pen drawing. Um, I find that one of the things I have a tendency to draw just a character and um, what I'm trying to do more of is do interactions between characters. So I did just this girl sitting in a garden and a hummingbird coming up on her. Um, and uh, this was, again, playing with fairies. It's like I keep on trying to um, come up with more imaginative stuff, playing with um, my ballpoint pen and what have you. And then... Um, this is my, my character Silk from my comic Silk and Steel. Um, <laughs> and you've been drawing me since 2008 and you still don't know what you're doing. It's like confidence is something that I don't care how old, how often you draw. Um, it's one of those things that you can either be a bravado in art or you can just feel like you're lower than a snail's belly and... I have a tendency to be in both places all the time. And this was trying to get a pose of um, two dancers off the internet. And I just wasn't, you know, I was getting the feeling of it, but I wasn't getting the form right. So it's like I came over here and I, I took that pose and I redid that pose again. Um, this is just me playing steampunk. I'm, I'm working on a steampunk comic. And um, every once in a while, I'll try to play with characters and fit, see what kind of new character I can come up with. Um, because there are going to be all kinds of people in the background and incidentals. Um, um, and I just gave him a, a, a little saying in the bubble. It's like, in this, in this case, you underestimate both your abilities and mine. Uh, and I love this. It's like sometimes you come up with just the right drawing. Um, this one was just a little, eh, I haven't drawn monsters in a while, and um, I'm heavily influenced by early Warner Brothers. I'm heavily, if you can't see um, the monster with the, the red monster with the tennis shoes on it, and that, you aren't looking very hard. Um, but I'm heavily influenced by Dr. Seuss. I'm heavily influenced by early Warner Brothers cartoons, and, and it'll show up all the time in my work. And here was me going, you know, just doing silly stuff. Um, uh, quit giving excuses, draw, you know, again, I think I, I, I said in my last video that on sketchbooks that 
I will pick up sketchbooks and put them down and pick up sketchbooks and put them down, pick them up and put them down. So um, I have sketchbooks everywhere um, at various stages and, and various excuses. And, and like on this page, I was just doing bunnies, all kinds of bunnies playing with, with uh, characters and animals. And um, this one, again, I will go back to this all the time. This was picking up um, um, different, this was Crouching Tiger Hitting Dragon. I'm going, I know what that is. That's what I was doing that day. I was watching Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon. And this is like in the village. This was a, a nice dialogue scene where you have the, the girl in the over the shoulder shot um, with the, the two main characters. This is a marvelous down shot of this um, huge city. Um, this was looking through an opening of a building. This was just a village. Um, this was me just, I started playing with stuff because I'd stopped watching the film and, and wasn't doing stuff. So I was starting to play with hair. Um, this was from um, Sekiichi Hatsukoi. That was a... Uh, uh, just a, a shot that I really liked. The character was uh, asleep next to um, the window in the uh, train he was in, in Sekei Chatsukoi. And I just, oh, uh, and excuse my Japanese, uh, Sekei Chatsukoi is a um, Japanese anime that um, they translate to first time world's greatest love. I think, you know, it's one of those that doesn't translate well. But I watch a lot of anime. And again, playing with characters. And what I thought I'd show you today, because I'm not going to go through, like I said, I've got about this much more. So that's all, all I'm going to, to show for today. But what I thought I'd talk to you about today, somebody um, asked me about um, taking symbols. And, and she said she does more realistic drawing. And, and how do you go from doing something realistic um, to, like, cartoon? And um, I thought what I, I'd do today is show you an idea with eyes. Um, she was talking about, you know, when you do realistic eyes. Um, okay. I'm one of those people who I do kind of, I carve my drawing. I, I'm not one of those people who can who really lays down like one line or feel like it can lay down one line. And um, eyes have a very specific mechanical way of drawing them. You, it's like you've got an almond shape and a ball and there's a lid and you have an edge down here and your eye fits into that and you've got um, the brow that will come up and back and there's this arc of a bean that kind of fits in there and you know put your pupil in um this is a really great way to get depth in a, an eyeball you just have a ball you put the pupil there put another ball to the side for the highlight draw a bean down here for the reflected light because the um the light goes through that point and hits it down here so that this area up here is very dark. And then this area is like the next value. And all of a sudden, notice how that pops. So this, if you were going to color this, this would be white. This would be your next lightest area. And then you've got that pupil in there. And then because you've got the lid, this area right here is going to be shaded. Because it's underneath the lid. Okay, I'm going um, to wet my fingertip. And just throw, and eh, I got that a little bit too dark, but you got the idea. And put too much water in that one. But see how you can, when you wet your finger and do that. Now, mind you, the tip of your finger is going to be uh, um, a bit purple. I mean, you can you go wash it off after you, you've been playing. But um, you can see how you can get that nice dimension in there. Now, when you're doing eyes for um for cartoons um there's all kinds of different ways to do it one of them is what they call a, a triangle where you you basically you make a ball but you kind of give it a triangle like the bottom is a line and the inside say this is the inside of the eye so 
it's kind of like a triangle and you set the direction of where your eye is going by throwing that ball to the side of wherever it's going and then always you know add your brows and your brows are usually they they try to make them like they're connected to the eye you don't see like there's a circle you've got a circle within a circle within a circle and your eye is up here so the triangle the little triangle gives direction and then you know your standard brow is you know, like a u so it's like circle circle brow brow or if you're doing um a head you know you're going to have a ball let's face it all characters are balls and, and if you ever see when a cartoonist like will take a ball and you're dividing it in half and you're dividing it in half and you do that because you're giving that volume and you can stick two dots nose mouth I mean, it's like you've got, all of a sudden you've got a character. Now when you add the brows and a C, let's face it, a C, another C that follows it, an inside C, you got a person. Real easy. And you can do those all day long. I mean, if you want to um, really make or get a feel for doing faces and give, give us... Um, it would be an upside down U on top or actually a ball one way or another and you give direction to your eye by using that ball or using like I said the um, the uh, the triangle you give um, direction to where you know it's like all of a sudden three eyes that's not going to do anything but what happens is if you keep on doing that, I mean, you can, you can draw characters all day long and you can keep on, um, just with just a ball, with just a ball, give it, divide it in half. So you're doing like a, um, a backwards C and a backwards C, just throw a couple eyeballs in there, a nose and a mouth and a couple of ears. And you can do hundreds of those. And you get better and better just by doing hundreds of them. And then what you can do, what you, once you've started doing a lot of those, like I said, it's always nice if you add that, that extra um, you like shape because that gives you direction to your eye. And then, see, I did when I didn't put the uh, my cross in there. All of a sudden, the face went flat. That's why it's it's always nice to put. This gives you where the center line of your face is, and it gives some volume. But again, if you give it a circle and a circle, and then all of a sudden your character really starts getting dimension. And then if you want to throw some hair on there. And if you want to go a little bit further. Throw in a cheek. And a standard um, expression. You know, a smile, open mouth, tongue, teeth. Fill in, all of a sudden you got a smile. So if you got a circle, nose, circle, circle, ear, hair, give him a cheek, neck, and if you, you know, do, do, just keep playing with them. And don't worry about, is it good, bad, or indifferent? And then you can start playing with expressions. Okay, with expressions, it's like, I will just sometimes do nothing but eyes. So you'll throw a couple of eyeballs in there. And 
if you have your brows go straight, that's usually thinking or they're not thinking or there's, it's just not reacting. Um, arch brows, surprise, um, concern. Okay. Brows going down, anger, frustration, and brows going up like this, sorrow, sad, um, concern. So the thing is, is that take, so you want to, can take a circle, throw them looking in a direction. Throw the eyebrows up, and then you start playing with the mouth. And this is how you can start getting a feel for what would a character do or be by just playing around with simple expressions, simple head, And just don't worry about if it's good or bad or anybody's going to look at it or if you screw up. You know, just keep drawing lots of little heads. And one of the things it does too is that you get used to drawing circles. And drawing circles is the basis for just about everything that's um, when you're doing characters or something natural. So that is my simple lesson for today on drawing heads, eyeballs, and going from something that is looking realistic to symbolic. And again, what, what you want to just fill, fill your page with eyeballs and directions and different ways of doing eyeballs. There, there's all kinds of ways of, you know, if you want a character to look more cute, you or if you want it to look um, more cartoony, make the, the eyeballs small and throw the eyes close together. If you want to make it cute, make the eyeballs big. I think you've, you've seen this before. You make the eyeballs and the pupils really big and you throw them far apart. So if you give it a little nose, a little mouth, And you have a cuter character less chin bigger forehead the standard uh, i should probably do a uh, i'll do a um a session for you guys where you do all the the different styles to make things cuter or what have you but normally cute characters have big pupils their eyes are set wide apart they have little noses little mouths big cheeks big foreheads and that's how you get, you know, little, little, there, there you go. Little chin, big forehead, big ears, and you get more of a cute character. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you for stopping by. My name is Lynn Hunter. Like me, join the, uh, the website. I'm posting once a week. Thanks for stopping by.